space. So why does this uh, break symmetry? Well, that's that's just easy to understand. So this phi ground set it does, itself doesn't break the symmetry, and this phi is uh, this is actually psi minus one. This is psi one. So psi one is the sum of three terms. Each of them do not break SU two symmetry, they, but on a U one symmetry. Uh, they do not break U one symmetry. But now, uh, if you add three of them and compute the expectation value of say one plus, this is just a one plus I O two, and then uh, you see that I mean expectation value of plus within five ground state is just vanishing because of this equation. But uh, if you apply this guy here, then it has some overlap with this. If you apply this guy here, it has some overlap with this. So uh, you can just compute and rearrange and do, and you find that this expectation value is now zero. But this is n proportional to b, and also scale with b. So this is just the, this is the beginning of this kind of story. But of course, uh, since I had to sum a bunch of states, uh, that means this breaks the symmetry, but does not break the symmetry fully. And to fully break the symmetry, I had to sum up all these low line, many of low line states. But anyway, this is just a bit. So you have to work harder to get this square root three. This square root three tells you that you are doing the best job. But anyway, uh, if you try hard enough, you get this. So this is just Uh, no, no, of course not. So it breaks the symmetry explicitly. So this, this breaks symmetry. So, and now, yes, coming back to your question. So in order, in order to do this, I have to prepare this. And if I want to proceed like in the easy model, what we would, what we would like to do is consider the Hamiltonian with stubborn magnetic field H and consider this. And of course, this is not very um, not very physical. Uh, it's not easy to prepare this kind of magnetic field. But anyway, theoretically, we can do this. And this does not break any fundamental law of physics, so you can consider it. So this is the Heisenberg part and this stubborn magnetic field part. And I denote by phi ground state H, the corresponding ground state for this Hamiltonian with stubborn magnetic field. And then what we can prove is something we expect. So if we consider the expectation value of all the parameters O1 divided by B of in this ground state with H, and again the same limit. You first take the infinite volume limit and then let H goes to zero. If you switch this, you simply get zero. So you first let B goes to infinity and let H go to zero. Then, well, my result is very partial. What I can prove is that this is greater than or equal to x star. And I strongly believe that this is equal. But we are still not able to prove it. And, and we, we understand why it is so difficult. And of course, uh, for this, I want to show that the fluctuation of O is small and things like that. Why did you say it should be Why did you say it should be Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, first of all, this m star is defined so that to pick up the maximum possible value taken within, taken within, the, within this star. So that's very interesting. Yeah, that's the big thing. So first of all, when I define m star, I look at this ground state and look at look how O1 behaves. I look at, I look at, I concentrate on this state and I examine how O1 behaves. And we sort of picked up the maximum possible value that this guy takes. And that is M star. So we 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 believe that this is the order parameter that this system prefers to this system. Yeah, so uh, naturally this this should be equal to M star. Or in case of the easy, it's a finite temperature version, but in, in the analogous equation for easy model, we know that it's Um, this is not equal in mean, only if you. I just say what is the Fermat's equation? Oh, okay. I just want to ask the value of Fermat's equation. Oh, 
start, but I think you do want to say that because the start comes from some next month third, so you think that this should confirm to some three month third. Um, I don't understand the question. Okay, let, let's talk about and anyway, we, we expect what we can improve. And we, we also, I also expect many things, like the fluctuation is small here, that the test state cannot be good. So this is, this is uh, my limitation. And because now, and now it's very difficult, because I have to consider a new Hamiltonian B, in which H is added, so uh, it takes uh, extra care. And the proof of this is very, very simple, uh, but I don't, Trouble has been for a few people into that, and it's it's only based on this, this very trivial inequality. So, phi bar set H is the exact one set of H H, and so uh, if you take any xi here, of course this guy is larger. And simply by rewriting this, uh, you get this. So that the, but the most important here is that here uh, in this trivial. In quality, I took this psi k, which does the job. So I know that, uh, as for psi k, I know very well it has, it, it exhibits maximum possible spontaneous signature breaking and so on. So, this is the proof, but. Okay, so these were all finite coding results. And again, let me switch off my other uh, magnetic field and think about the case without magnetic spectrum. Uh, of magnetic field and look at the ground state in the infinite coordinate. And then uh, there is a mathematically well established way of defining and classifying ground state for the infinite coordinate limit, but uh, the easy way to introduce is let A be any local operator, and then you define uh, your infinite coordinate limit, infinite coordinate state as a, as a sort of expectation which tells, uh, which gives you back the expectation value of any local operator. So this omega sin A is the expectation value of A in a, in the, in a ground state that I call omega, omega sin. And now E is a unit vector pointing any direction. And this is a infinite volume ground state, uh, which uh, I denote by omega E. And this UE is a global spin rotation, which brings E0, E0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2. And by constructing these states, we find that uh, if you take this omega sin and take the expectation value of spin operator, of course it's zero. But if you take this, then the expectation value is as uh, everybody uh, expects, it's, uh, it, it's proportional to the star in the direction. And actually, this was constructed from psi k, not the exact ground state of finite system, but you can show that the infinite, in the infinite volume limit, they are both the ground state. Because uh, if you take the expectation value of local energy, they just obtain the minimum value. So they are the ground state. They are both the ground state. Oh, there are several definitions in system algebra formalism of the ground state, but uh, with many definitions, the, these are, in any definitions, they are both regarded as the ground state but as ground states of the infinite volume system. And what are the properties of these guys? Well, first of all, this omega sin is obtained from the ground state that we learned in class of the Newton. It's the lowest, it corresponds to the lowest energy, lowest energy eigenvalue. Now this has a weird one property that it has a long range order, but no spontaneous symmetry breaking and other operators give it huge properties. So we should conclude that this is this is obtained from the ground state, but this is an artistic state. And this one, omega E, is obtained from low-lying states like this. And this, this is not the ground state of for finite volume, but this exhibits very nice properties. And we should regard this as a physical state, which has an error. And many people use mean field calculation to solve this kind of temporary problem. And the miracle of mean field theory is that you just jump to this not getting this uh, and, and uh, this omega E obtained from low line states, how does it look like? Well, it looks natural. It has a male order, so the spins are pointing in, in the opposite direction. And how does this omega sin looks like? This, this came from the ground state. 
but uh, something we're learning or teaching. But uh, this is actually, this turns out to be the mixture of these mail-order states. And you integrate over all the possible solid atoms. So this is a real state. And of course, experimentalists just find this kind of state, of course. So in Anderson's RVD, in the infinite quantum limit, becomes something like this. OK, so I have to hurry up and talk about the uh, similar things in both science and condensation. Because in the title was couple of BVC. Yes. But you, you always does. You may, uh, there is some, some yeah, you, will, you will see more. OK, so let's look at BVCs. And I will first look at the single boson step number. But you know, it's, it's just very similar. And almost all the equations are similar. So I take the same lambda. And now, uh, for each x, I denote by ax, theta by x, and I think creation operator of a boson. And then x is the number of theta. And I consider Hilbert space for n hard four bosons on that. That means uh, I start from phi back, the, the, the vacuum, no state on the, on the so state with no bosons. And I create all oh, this. I imagine something that which are called atoms. So these are massive bosons. And I create bosons on subset S. S is a subset of lambda with uh, whose size is n. So what you get is something like this. Uh, no over, and in this case, n is 1, 2, 3, 4, or if you want more uh, complicated computation, <laughs> you still see where I would go. Uh, you, you get something like this. Oh, of course, please ignore comments. There's only single species of bosons. And they're on, they're on, that's on. Okay. So this is, uh, this is a Hilbert space for n hardcore bosons. Uh, and now, my total Hilbert space, first of all, is just a uh, uh, direct sum of all these Hilbert spaces. So this is, this. there can be no bosons or just two bosons. This is total Hilbert space. And the Hamiltonian is just standard. This is the hopping term where boson is annihilated here, created here. They are neighbors, so this means that boson hops to the neighboring side. And this is just the nearest neighbor interaction. I, I think we call them this way. And, uh, but this is just the Neotonium without uh, chemical potential. But I think uh, to control the number of bosons, it's convenient to introduce chemical potential new. So I consider this. And, we, and I fix this value for chemical potential. If I have any possible And now, uh, I and I denote by phi ground state, the ground state of this H mu in the full Hilbert space. And now we shall assume that this phi ground state exhibits both in synchronization. As I, we worked on phi ground state with one real world. And uh, what is both Einstein condensation? If it is a free boson, so that's just trivial. Uh, all guys just go to phi a single state. Wrong state, but uh, this is an interacting system. It's more sophisticated, and now uh, people know that uh, the best characterization of BEC is in terms of something called off diagonal long range order, or the uh, all. And this is just a kind of long range order measured by this two point function. What is this? Well, you annihilate a boson at site Y, and then they may not be nearest neighbor, but they are very far away. You annihilate what? Boson here at y, and you create a boson here at x. And if this uh, matrix element, of this expectation value, does not vanish when x and y are very far, you say that there is of the angle of the order. And to measure this, uh, it's it's nice to introduce O plus and O minus this way. This is the sum of creation operator. This is sum of annihilation operator. And doing this uh, spins algebra backwards uh, as from the spin system case, I define O1 and O2 this way. And then uh, this O1, O2 becomes a two-dimensional vector, which can measure the symmetry breaking of global U1 space uh, presented quantum systems. 
And so the all of that one wrong than the order here can be written in this familiar form. It said that the uh, expectation value in ground state with O1 squared or O2 squared is greater than this. So this is our now now I have to assume this. So this is my assumption. For this fixed value of D, a mu, mu, uh, I assume that the ground state a of H mu is unique and has some high fixed, has some definite bottom number n, and also it exhibits of that one of the order like this. And unfortunately, this has been proved only for half the case uh, by Kennedy Deep Shastri and Hugo Kishi. But this is just, again, based on Dyson Reed's sum method of perception probability. And we don't have, we don't know of any other ways of proving this kind of thing. And Again, this uh, by ground state has a definite M, and this is proved for half the case, and I'm assuming this in general, and I think it's believed to be true in general. Uh, we, we, all, we, we have this O1, and O1 is just a sum of creation and inflation, and uh, its expectation value in high ground state is fixed and is of course bunch. So again, we have very similar situation as before. Uh, under this assumption that by ground state exhibits uh, both Einstein condensation, we say that now it's the same blackboard, but uh, this is unique, but it shows off diagonal wrong range order, but, uh, but it doesn't exhibit anything like uh, something asymmetric breaking. And this again says that this O has a huge fluctuation, it's weird, is it unfiscal? Actually, I will finally argue that this is a physical. But anyway, now I can repeat the same story. And uh, I now define this variational state exactly with exactly the same definition as before. And then I can prove that this is again low line state. Uh, if you have a very, very good memory, you remember that this was L squared before. But now, uh, for some technical reason, I cannot replace this with L squared. I mean, we sure that this could be done, but uh, this is what I can prove. You know? And so uh, this is extension of Kasaki. These are all line states. And uh, this is, again, the definition of my other partner here. And now, uh, if you have very good memory, it was three here. But because of this, you two here. Now it's U1. I have two instead. It's too detailed. Uh, more important is this. Again, I just sum over all these bunch of online states uh, to define the trial state of k. And now this psi k exhibits uh, full symmetry breaking, and this is almost the same slide in, in psi k. The order parameter almost behaves as a classical quantity with this fixed value. And I can do exactly the same thing. If you add to this Hamiltonian the symmetry breaking field with very small maximum here, you know, this is this term, and you know, by this the corresponding ground state, and then again in this limit where V infinity is first taken and it's term goes to zero minor, uh, the expectation value of O1 is non vanishing. So infinitesimally small symmetry breaking field, which is this one, uh, triggers symmetry triggers spontaneous symmetry breaking, exactly as in the Z model or in the Heidelberg unfair value. Uh, but, but, is this physical? If this were photons, this is quite a thing. But I said I'm treating like cold atoms. That is a massive system of massive bottles. And then, for example, uh, is this real? Can you really think about this kind of superposition? So suppose that there are exactly n total bosons in the universe. And then psi zero contains n bosons. So if psi zero is here, then the, this is a wave function of the rest of the universe. The rest of the universe, of course, should contain n total minus n bosons. And if the, our container has psi one in it, it has n, n plus one boson in it. So the rest of the, the universe in, can be in any state, but it, has n total minus n minus one boson. So if you restrict this thing onto our system, it becomes a mix. Of course, this one and this one are 
total. If we restrict this onto the system, we are considering this will become a mixed state, not the superposition of the case. So this is simply action, this is a U1 gauge invariant. Uh, you can never have this kind of state if it's not uh, gauge invariant. Or uh, I said that I add small symmetry breaking field like this, but again, for massive bosons, nobody can construct this kind of Newtonian. This breaks U1 gauge symmetry. Yeah. Oh, that's Daniel number conservation or whatever. Or that, that's the new one symmetry of the whole. Okay, um, so uh, this tells you that this is not physical. So uh, if you look at the ground, if we compare the ground state, uh, I see, and now I say that in this case, uh, the ground state which breaks the symmetry, you can define it like this, is not physical because it sort of breaks the U1 symmetry. And the fine ground, ground state which was unphysical for Heisenberg uncertainty case is now physical because it preserves the symmetry. And what about this puzzle about uh, physical situation about large fluctuation? Because I said, Oh, alpha exhibits huge fluctuation, and that's unfiscal for Heisenberg and Fermi case. But in this case, actually, oh, well, it's true that O alpha exhibits huge fluctuation, but O is not a physically observable one. So this is not a, not a, not a physical, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't matter physically. So in this case, in this case, this is a comparison. So if you start from the ground state, okay, this is a comparison between BEC and Spencer's state. So one way is to start from fine ground state, that is finite volume ground state, that's the ground state we learn in this class. You simply take the infinite volume limit, then you get something with long range order, but does not have SSP, and this has huge fluctuation. And I said, for speed system, this is unfiscal. This is not the experimental yet, but for boson system, this is what is realized in cold atomic experiments. And so this, this is a, this is a state with explicit symmetry break. And I said, so in mean field calculation, you get this. Even if you are working on bosons, you get this. And many people are just happy with this you are non gauge invariant state and make computation for gauge invariant. And of course there is because uh, this physical omega set is obtained by integrating this thing over T. So if you compute any gauge invariant observable using this, uh, you are okay. But if you go too much, if you believe too much in field theory and compute something not gauge invariant using this kind of thing, you get a wrong answer. Okay, so uh, so then, this was this is for single BEC. So uh, I say that this is physical here. So then, are there anything any interesting spontaneous symmetry breaking there? Well, I think there is. Uh, if you think about slightly different setting of couple BEC. So what we do here is uh, I prepare two copies of the system I was considering, exactly the same copies, and. I will also always put prime to the system system, so lambda and lambda prime, the same lens. And but now I consider and I, I consider the Hilbert space in which the total number of bosons is just fixed. So that's a physical Hilbert space. So I declare that the total number of bosons in two systems together is equal to two n all the time. So the Hilbert, physical Hilbert state that I consider now is a direct sum of all possible m. That means this I'm summing over all the possible way to distribute two m particles into the two systems. Okay. So this is my Hilbert space. And then Hamiltonian, without coupling interaction, uh, this is just the sum of the Hamiltonians that I was considering. I want to see an SSP. That's a kind of, yeah. So I want to see if 
I want to see if there's anything like this is D. So I will see. As opposed to any other alternative oh. system that you could have constructed. I don't know, but and also also if you look at a uh, BBC experiment, you, you can you can have a situation like you can uh, separate the system your convex into two and let them convex separately or you know and, and you can do interference experiments like that. So this is uh, this is in a sense accessible. Precisely speaking, no. Because I want to use the previous result. Okay, and the two is not okay to get the same result. But you can just copy and paste it on the next one. I, for my purpose, I need two n. And of course, it's fiscally relevant. But for my mathematical proof, I need two n. Okay, so uh, with, with this, with this setting, this is a, just a copy of two Neoconians. And I make the same assumption as the previous part. And so this, now this is the unique ground state of the company on the phone. This is just the ground state of one system and this is just a precise copy on the other. Okay. So this is just a problem. And now I can consider low-lying excited states by using this trick of hitting this. But now this creates bottom. I didn't say this, I'm sorry. In this case, uh, in this case, of course, now this is just a sum of eight of ours. So this creates a boson. So uh, this creates L bosons on the first system. But now I apply L prime, prime minus to this, this second ground state so that this annihilates L bosons. So by doing this, I'm using more or less the same thing here, but I'm preserving the total number of the bosons in two systems. So this is still in the physical Hilbert space. And to construct the low line states like this, uh, instead of uh, I, I this gamma here, uh, I just sum over all these things with fixed step. So this low-lying state, the sum of low-lying state is again within the physical Hilbert space. Uh, I inter introduce this theta for all other purposes, but I usually ignore this for the moment. So uh, this is just a repetition of what I, what I did here, uh, but one very big difference is that these both of them are getting value, uh, conserves the total total number. And uh, now, with this, uh, I can show that, let me go this quickly, I first can show that this new state gamma exhibits uh, of diagonal long range order within each subsystem. That's, of course, uh, that's almost trivial because we started from something with of diagonal long range order. So with the same assumption as before, we can, we, we can, I can show that in each system, in lambda and lambda prime, they this state exhibits a uh, maximum possible diagonal range order. But more importantly, uh, there is a off diagonal long range order between the two systems in this trial state gamma. And that means if you annihilate particles on one of the system, and if you create on the other system, and then there is non vanishing a very large expectation value for this, uh, this matrix. And, uh, to, to see what this is, uh, it's most convenient to define the great Hoffman operator which measures relative phase ordering between the two systems. And that is, uh, this is the definition, but this is more clear. You have this O1, O2, U1 for the parameter, you rotate it by theta, and then you take the inner parameter. So this is, the picture is something like this. And so this measures uh, whether these two other parameters are separated uh, the angle between the two other parameters is theta or not. And uh, now I can prove that in this gamma, trial low line state gamma, uh, this expectation value of C takes the maximum possible value. So this means that the relative phase between this BC1 and BC prime, the first BC and the second BC, the relative phase is just precisely fixed to theta. And you know, this is a coupled system, so each of BC has U1 symmetry. So uh, to, 
I can say that, so this one has U1 symmetry, this one has U1 symmetry. So the whole thing has U1 plus U1 symmetry. And out of this U1 plus U1 symmetry, the global phase cannot be broken because of the gate invariant or the number conservation. But the relative phase U1 can be broken. And this happens in this trial. So let me go quickly. So now I can do the same trick. Uh, now if I add this term, this is weird. It's a kind of global coupling, but this preserve. This is physically, uh, this does not violate gate invariance. This is number conservation. If I add this term to this uh, couple of Hamiltonian, so this means that you introduce very weak, very, very weak coupling between the two DECs. Oh, yeah, of course, me, um, electromagnetic field. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not. So the both sides are neutral parts of the end. Oh, yeah, probably I said so. But anyway, uh, but, okay, probably I shouldn't say this. But anyway, number conservation. Uh, but anyway, so this conserves now. It is tiles this is big. And uh, the theorem is that you can expect, so if you very weakly couple the two systems and consider the ground state, and then uh, look at this operator which measures, which looks at the phase, uh, whether they have, they don't phase, whether their relative phase is theta, and then uh, the infinite volume limit of this thing, and you can take, of course, some just the limit, zero limit, uh, this takes the maximum possible volume. Again, I can only prove the inequality. So again, this shows that there happens some SSP, not the SSP of global things, but this relative, relative thing for order one. This has U1 symmetry, let's say. You want that it's maybe not to be coupled to. And so uh, what happens to the finite system, uh, let me go quickly, uh, I would conjecture that in finite system, uh, epsilon small as order three minus squared is sufficient to establish uh, full phase ordering where the ground state with small coupling epsilon is almost equal to this my trial state. And so if you look at this trial state here, uh, so now I can treat this uh, entanglement and in this trial state, uh, or in this ground state, you see that these two D, E, C are entangled. Uh, because, I mean, yes, like this. And this entanglement took place because there is a diagonal between the two systems. And also, I had to restrict ourselves to the physical Hilbert space where the total number of bosons is conserved on the monotone. And so this, this two, number conservation and not that one or the other, uh, inevitably lead us to entanglement. And this kind of thing never happens in Heisenberg and Fermanian. So this is my summary, but I'm running out of time. So thank you for